Good morning. Good morning. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. It's a little warm out today. Saying hi to all our friends in the along the street. Oh, there's Barb. Did Barb, do you have everything you need? Good. Great. Anybody listening on 87.7? I, I, I don't know that anybody is, but uh, maybe Bones will put it on the radio and then I'll feel like we have that set up for a reason. So 87.7, that's right. That's right. We do all the hits. Every Sunday morning at 9.30, we do all the hits. A uh, couple of announcements. Let's do birthdays. We forgot Kim Stackpole's birthday. She is, her birthday's today. So happy birthday to Kim Stackpole. Paul Schubert's birthday is today. Uh, Carol Cawthorns. Carol's over there. Maybe she's listening to us. Her birthday's Tuesday, the 7th. Tom Krause, the 8th. Sarah Jane Crawford, the 9th. And Heather Doyle, the 11th. So any birthdays out here we forgot? No. Anniversaries. Anybody get married around the 4th of July? No. All right. Uh, we are still gathering things for a tell that should be sent out this week. Uh, there's a couple of things we're waiting to come in. Um, we had talked about doing an ice cream social at the end of the month, so uh, Andrea Snedeker is still trying to work out some dates for that. But so, uh, just so you know that I will be for those who are watching on Facebook and Zoom. We'll be doing communion in the parking lot from 10:45 to 11:15. If you come by the the uh, prayer garden. I'll have communion out there if you want to drive up for that. Uh, check your Trinitarian. They're looking into a virtual VBS and um, I know that Linda's looking for some help with that. So if you can help out, you just need to let Linda Moffat know. Uh, Trinity Stable is going to sneak up on us. It's the 15th of this month. The Wednesday was the first, so the third Wednesday is July 15th. So if you have Anything you could bring in for Trinity Stable, I know they will appreciate it. Uh, we're praying for Betty Haycock. She has um, something going on that they're trying to get to the bottom of, and she has a number of doctor's appointments coming up. And um, so, uh, and I found out this weekend that Nedra Schubert's moving from her home out to Harmony Place uh, August 1st, which is where Shirley Zimmerman is at, at Harmony Place. Uh, so we're praying for Nedra because that's a big change. That's a big change. Uh, let's see. I think that that's it. What's that? Being with Shirley is a big deal. And moving when you've been in that house. I don't know how long she's been in that house. Um, so uh, she needs our prayers. So. All right. Anything else? What did I forget? Are you reading the lesson? Am I reading the lesson? Jerry is. Oh, Jerry Silas reading a little. Oh, you're, that's why you're getting double pay. I was trying to figure out. Sorry. I'm a little slow Sunday morning. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's sing our gathering song, Oh God Beyond All Praising.
we'll do the opening that's in your bulletin. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is morning and the day is just beginning. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O God, for with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Amen. And the psalmody. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it. And your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Amen. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Amen. And we'll pray the prayer of the day. Let us pray. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Grant that we may believe in you, call upon you, know you, and serve you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Jerry's going to read the lesson. The first reading is from the ninth chapter of Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off and you shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the seventh chapter of Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inmost self. But I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowd, saying, To what will I compare this generation? It's like children sitting in the marketplace, calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. I neglected to thank Mary Ann Moran for playing this morning. Uh, Teresa's on vacation. So we're grateful to have Mary Ann playing, uh, and of course Jerry singing, and uh, Dan Klinger, I wanted to let you know, you need to get your money back from that motorcyclist you paid to drive down, because he did it during Jerry's reading, so. He'll be back, right. I paid that train engineer, too. You paid the train engineer, that's right. (laughs) Just wait. So... Throughout our country, this reopening process seems to be not going quite as many had hoped it might. I know a lot of people want to get back, want to get back to life the way it was Christmas, to, you know, right after Christmas, 2019. Look, we need to open our stores. We need to fan the flames of economic fires so that you know people can get back to work and the jobs numbers are getting better. Uh, We just need to learn to do all of this in new and interesting ways. And it's going to be the same in the church as well. One of the things that I just see in our future is, you know, everybody carrying hand sanitizer no matter where they go, having their masks just in case, physically distancing from one another. I'm sure you read about the family that gathered 30 people together for a birthday party and Nobody's physically distanced, nobody wore a mask, and 18 people ended up getting the COVID virus, and some of those were family members that didn't even go to the party. They got it from people who did and then brought it back and gave it to them. 39 states now, uh, numbers are going up again. There are people in, young people in Alabama having a contest, you put money into a pot, I don't know if this is apocryphal or not. Who knows what's true anymore? Uh, Putting money in a pot that whoever gets the COVID virus first wins the money if they stay alive, right? If they survive survive the night. You know, we are social beings. We need to be together. We need to be together as family. We need to be together as friends. But for the love of Jesus, if you just watch, the news coming out of Houston and the cases and the number of people under the age of 30 now that are on ventilators uh, are doing this, uh, what is it called, HECMO, this, they hook you up, they put oxygen in your blood and return it back into your, you know. I implore you to be safe. With that said, you gotta stop socially distancing yourself. Oh, there's the airplane. Jesus wouldn't socially distance. I want you to physically distance yourself. Stop socially distancing. You're going to say, well, that's semantics, Pastor. Well, I'd like to know. Well, I did some searching, right? If you ever want to know something, well, just ask your good friend Google, and he'll tell you everything you need to know, right? So, uh, again, you know, if you do some research, this phrase socially distancing 
comes out of the SARS epidemic in 2003. That's when it first seems to become part of our vernacular. You know we mean physically distancing, right? Socially distancing is going to kill us. It's going to kill us emotionally. It's going to kill us psychologically. It's going to kill us spiritually. But it makes you wonder who came up with that phrase. Right? I'm, I'm picking and choosing because it's hot and I'm going to make my way through this sermon. I have a doctor friend of mine who works at the uh, West Shore Hospital in the ER. He said he has seen relatively few cases of COVID-19 at West Shore Hospital. What he's seeing now is a rash of people going in because of the social isolation. You know, people psychologically are starting to break down. Uh, so, you know, we have this fight between being too casual with getting back to what is life and people being way too careful and it's hard to find out what's gonna be the right thing for the weeks and the months to come. You know, Jesus was talking about a situation in his generation when he says, you know, what, what, what do I compare this generation to? They're like children who uh, uh, are in the marketplaces uh, saying, we played the flute and you wouldn't dance, we mourned and you wouldn't join us. John the Baptist came not eating and drinking and you said he has a demon and here's the son of man doing ministry to the Gentiles and to the last the lost, the least, touching lepers talking to tax collectors, eating with them, and you say he's a glutton and a drunkard. Jesus is, is using, he's using a simile to make a point. You know, it's like saying, this generation is like people, you know, there's a phrase that came out of um, the colonial days in America. It's a phrase, you know, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't, right? It's a similar kind of phrase. You know, the people are kind of numb to the circumstances around them. John's too serious. Jesus is, you know, he's way too liberal. John's way too conservative. What do we do with this generation, Jesus says? And it sounds very familiar to us. So many people are numb with indecision. Do I go out? Do I stay home? Do I wear a mask? Do I visit my parents? I don't know what to do anymore. So a good place to turn when we reach that point is to the teachings of Jesus. And this morning he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. What, what does it mean for us to take on the yoke of Jesus Christ? And why does Jesus say that it's going to be easy? He says it's easy if we look at texts like John 3.16, you know, God so loved the world, he gave the Son, whoever believes will not perish but may have eternal life. Paul goes on to say in Romans 10, you know, if you just confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be, you will be saved, right? That sure sounds easy. It just comes down to saying, I believe. Yoking ourselves to those teachings is another thing. You know, for me, looking at my life over the years, right? Yoking ourselves to sin is exhausting. We know sin leads to all kinds of problems and potholes and empty promises. Yoking ourselves to earthly desires and bad habits can take all of our attention, take all of our energy. How do we yoke ourselves to Jesus? Well, it begins, it begins with learning from Jesus, really internalizing his teachings, you know, through reading and through listening and discerning and praying. We've got to really take that into our souls. If I were to sum up the teachings of Jesus, I would say he would love first, right? Love is at the center of the teachings of Jesus. And the first teaching is not only loving God, but loving each other, loving our neighbors. You know, holding on to the anger and the jealousy and the resentment and the grudges and the hate. You know, those are 
those are great burdens to carry in our lives. I mean, I think about those times I've gotten home after a long trip uh, and, and I'm just fuming about all those other jerks on the road, you know, those other drivers who don't know how to drive, right? And you just come home and you're, you could just feel your blood pressures up and you're just fuming about how those other drivers were driving. And then after a while, after a good cup of coffee, I said coffee, right? You're having a chance to sit and relax, you know, that burden kind of drifts away. Now, loving those ugly drivers is, is another thing, right? We're we supposed to love the unlovable. That's why Jesus says, doesn't just give us a suggestion to love each other. He commands us. We need to learn from Jesus to learn to love, learn to live a life that not only involves love, but humility and gentleness. Jesus ministered to all people. He did not just minister to the elite, the rich, the religiously pure, the educated. Jesus was against such social distancing. He didn't say blessed are the spiritually elite. What? He said blessed are the poor in spirit. He didn't say blessed are the rich and powerful. He said blessed are the poor. From the time of Lucy... She wasn't a Neanderthal, was he? Lucy was a, you, you know who I'm talking about, that skeleton, uh, uh, right? Yeah, from the time of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, she wasn't, she was something else, but uh, Homo forensis or something like that. Anyway, right, we've been socially distant, we've been setting up social strata, layers of, so, you know, the riffraff can't be with the elite. That's not the kind of social distancing Jesus calls us to live by. Jesus has yoked himself to humanity, all of humanity through the cross. We don't have to bear the burden of proving ourselves worthy. Jesus has carried that burden, but Jesus gives us the challenge, learn from me. That requires listening to the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to be your teacher, to be your guide, as we learn these new ways to love one another, to bear each other's burdens, to grieve in new ways, to, to, to celebrate in new ways. Now it's not the time to just think of ourselves. You know, I'm not going to play your games because, what, I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Jesus never taught love God and love only yourself. He did teach love God with your heart, mind, and soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And we can't love our neighbor in isolation. You can through physical distancing, right? I can give Dan a hug without hugging him. See, he's not, he's not hugging you back. I know physical contact is important for infants, but we can embrace one another without embracing. These are difficult times. Now's the time not just to think of ourselves, but to think of our community. Yoking ourselves to Jesus more and more. It is through the love of Jesus that we will learn how we can work as community in new ways, sustained by the Holy Spirit, if we're going to wrestle this pandemic into submission. Amen? Amen. Amen. Born in Cry? Is that where I'm at? You are correct. Born in Cry. I give you a hug, Dan. Hug back at you.
for the Apostles' Creed, I just ask that you say it silently and quietly to yourself. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O God. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us towards sustainable living. Hear us, O God. We pray for the nations. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O God. We pray for all in need. For all who are tired, feeling despair, sick, or oppressed, especially Trinity Lutheran Church families, health care, essential workers, shut-ins, Laura Doyle, Nedra Schubert, Betty Benner, Rob Krause, Liz Roach, Ina Thomas, Jim Carl, Ellen Brown, Don and Marianne Howe, Chris Larthy, emergency responders, hospital personnel, COVID-19 families, Nancy Schreffler, Rob Hanrahan, Betty Haycock, the family of Shauna Sober, Terry Overtich, Bob Sprinkle, Laurie Perry, John Haycock, Linda Dottie, Carol Cawthorn, Shauna Trenhauser, residents of Fry and Messiah Village, Karen Moeller, and Gary Dobinoff. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy. We pray for this congregation. Bless pastors, deacons, and congregational leaders. Energize children's ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our buildings. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways our love transforms our lives. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O oh God. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By dying, Christ destroyed our death. In rising, he restores our life. In giving us his spirit, he grants us peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Also with you. If you're related, you can kiss each other. If you're not, um, let's wave to Bones and Bev over there. Peace to them. And there's Barb Bean. We're waving to Barb as well. Oh, Carol's over there. Carol, there she is. Carol Cawthorn. Hey, Carol. So happy birthday, Carol. Oh, yeah. 
Um, you're going to play the offering song, and they'll hand out. Are they going to hand out communion now? Okay. All right. You guys gotten anything yet? No? Cars? No? Okay. We're working on it. We're getting there. The borough of Lemoyne makes it really hard. So yours may look a little different than your neighbors. One is gluten-free and one's not. The ones that are officially hermetically sealed are gluten-free. The other ones are, uh, I'm working it out. I'm figuring it out. They'll come. I, I didn't make them myself, but I did wrap them myself. So. Let's pray. Let's pray. Almighty God, your saints were often poor, yet you made them rich in works of faith. Help us bring you gifts that reflect our gratitude for the heavenly treasures you have given us. Amen. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you gave us, you sent us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Did John and, oh, there they are. Make sure they can join us. John must have taken the juice down. All right. You can
can unwrap your way for the body of Christ given for you. Amen. sing the communion liturgy. blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O giver of every good gift, you have fed us at your table that we might abide in your love and draw our life from you. Send us forth into the world to bear the fruits of the Spirit, that all creation might be filled with the life of the risen Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing, Oh Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
surgery this week on the one eye and then it's laser surgery you see it's surgery sometime in the future on the other one and uh, it did go well from what I understand so go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit thanks, thanks, thanks be to God the blessing of Almighty God Father Son and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever amen, amen. go in peace serve the Lord thanks. just a reminder to those folks watching if you want to come by I'll be in the prayer garden 10:45 to 11:15. It's uh, gosh, it's about 25 after right now. So um, anyway, God bless.